I haven't been able to really stop thinking about this one. I, I know. Mean, we know the details, of course. We've known them now for a while. The cops stood out there, did nothing, the broad contours. But luckily, some hero somewhere uh, leaked the video, the full video of the officers and their engagement in Uvalde in the classrooms. So let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. Uh, major props to the Austin American statesmen. They got the video. They did an excellent job doing the analysis. They uh, edited it. I mean, one of the most haunting lines is, they say that they edited out the screams of the children oh, from the video so that none of us would have to hear it. And what they point to is just a level of screwery inside which is difficult to comprehend. You can actually see the gunman come in. You see a child actually peek his head around the corner and you can immediately hear the gunshots. That's apparently where the, uh, uh, the screams were edited out. Then within a couple of minutes, you see three officers come in, uh, come close to the door, get engaged, but immediately, the moment they have fire, they all run back. From that moment forward, for another 77 minutes, nobody goes inside. And we are talking about dozens of guys who are gathered Just within this room. Around, milling fist around, fist bumping. On their phones, literally on their phones. Getting hand sanitizer. Fist bumping, getting hand sanitizer. It's difficult to describe how aimless uh, so many, so much of this looks. We have a video mashup here. Just look for if you know if this is a sensitive thing or whatever. I recommend that you don't watch it. But for those who can stomach it, let's take a listen. So the reason that that matters is you can see clearly, I mean, uh, 10 minutes, 11 minutes, there were gunshots that were still being fired while these guys were standing out there. If you continue to watch, I mean, again, it's a 77 minute long video, but if you continue to watch, what you see is you got guys milling around at the 56 minute mark. They're like, we're going in, but that they don't go in. Everybody's quote, looking for the keys, even though the door wasn't locked. And also even, you know, why didn't nobody ask for the keys earlier? A colossal cluster, you know, the hand sanitizer thing we referenced, just put this up there on the screen. I mean, just look at this guy. I mean, he's got a helmet on, you know, he's got his vest on, he's getting hand sanitizer, people were fist bumping, people were checking their phones, people are text messaging, making phone calls. You can say, which they have, and blamed Pete Arredondo, who was the chief of police, who made the call not to go in. But you guys were all out there. And ultimately, it was the Border Patrol guys at the end who were so disturbed that they even went in. Although, to be fair, you know, you can see that they were standing out They're there for a little long, too. They were around there for a fucking hour, too. Yeah, so, like, look, it's not, they're not, there's some heroes. I don't know who they are. I think the biggest one is probably the guy whose wife was, I think he was was killed and called him and was texting him from the room. He tried to go in. They, st they literally held him back, stopped him. You can actually see some of that. In the video too, so I I don't know well, I, that that image with the guy and the hands in it, it just really sticks with me. I, I you know it's at the fifty seven so minute mark too. I mean they're all just so casual. Like there's imagine. nothing going on. Like this is no big deal. Just hanging around, hanging around in their tough guy little outfits, like they're badasses when they're too fucking cowards, too cowardly to go in yeah, know, and rescue these kids. Uh, I mean they heard, they didn't have the kids screams edited out in real time. They heard that. Right. They heard the, that gunfire in those classrooms where there are children and teachers, and they do nothing for so long. You know, one of the other things um, that really uh, stood out to me is, remember we were told, oh, they engaged the gunmen, but they were they were wounded. Yeah. So they had to fall back. Oh, were they? Really? Wait, show, show me. Where's that? Yeah. Where does that happen? I, I mean, it's that was a total lie and bullshit. And I knew that from the beginning because they wouldn't give us any details mm -hmm. about, like, who was injured, how they were, how they were doing, were they in the hospital? Nothing. None of those police officers ended up going to the hospital because they none of them were injured. That was a total lie and part of their cover-up as an excuse for why they did not ultimately go in. And to your point, you know, they all have wanted to scapegoat this one dude who definitely deserves a yes. lot of blame— 
No right. doubt about it. But you had on the scene there that you see visibly in this video, you have the Uvalde Police Department, the regular police department. You have the Uvalde County Sheriff's Department. You have the Texas Department of Public Safety. You have Texas Rangers. You have U.S. Border Patrol. And you have U.S. Marshal Service. Show me in the video where they're having to restrain these people I from know. going in. No, 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 they're not trying to go in. They're not like, oh, my God, we want to go in and this guy just won't let us. No, they're all doing the same thing, which is absolutely nothing. So, listen, as you said, we knew a lot of these details already. Not because this is the story they told us, but it event it became blatantly obvious that they had just kind of hung around and hoped someone else would come in and do the hard work and do the scary thing that they didn't want to do. But to actually see the video and all these guys and how casual they are as kids are bleeding out on the floor, you can't unsee it. You can't unsee it. I, I mean, and the people who are the families here, they're so upset. You know, oh, that teacher who we played a video it. of him before, he just talks, he says he'll never forgive these cops, I mean, he was sitting there. And, the, and the, I wanna address another thing. People were like, well, there weren't a lot of shots afterwards. People bled out in that real classroom. You don't know how many people died. How many, if, if you'd gone in there and you neutralized this guy within 10 minutes, maybe you could have saved some lives. But you know, a lot of people bled out. That's your blood loss. And anybody who's worked in the military, first responder will tell you the first minutes are critical. So you let somebody just sit there, bleed out for over an hour, you're guaranteeing death. At the very least, you can give some people, at least some people, a fighting chance. And again, that's just something that they are not, they, they won't even acknowledge. And what's even, what pisses me off even more, this mayor, this guy is a serious problem. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen because he's been playing cover up from the very beginning. He went out and actually castigated the Austin American statesman as quote, chicken and unprofessional for releasing the video shoot, uh, footage before the families were able to see it first. Yeah, well, why didn't you show it to them? You know, it's been over a month and they've been asking for it from the very beginning. And this guy is very upset because Uvalde police has been getting the blame. And actually on this part, I will agree with him. He's like, it's not like the Texas Department of Public Safety doesn't have things to cover up too. And yeah, you're right, you know, screw all of you. That's really what the it comes down to. I was also reading about how there was a quote, heated debate where Governor Abbott and others had wanted to release the video but didn't do anything about it. Now look, maybe his office leaked it and they didn't want, I, I don't know who leaked it. That being said, I think the governor and them should still be much more forward. And I don't think it should come out this way. It shouldn't have to be leaked to the Austin American statesman. Yeah. The governor and the attorney general should come out and be like, hey, here's a video. It, 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 anybody in that video who has shown a dereliction of duty is hereby laid off, fired by the state of Texas. At the least, Yeah. the least. Yes. Not, you know, it, and, and, and you think about it, given the way our laws are structured, it's not, none of them are ever gonna face any criminal penalty for what they did here, uh, given the Supreme Court and ruling that police don't actually have a duty to protect you. But also, you know, none of them are really open to civil liability either. I personally think they should be. I think this guy, Arredondo, should be sued to high health yeah. for, for what he did. At the Again, because at, at, at least you can tie back the decision making to him. But there are a lot of, in, there are a lot of individual actors who made terrible, terrible, terrible decisions that day. And I mean, at least we have the video. At least we can all see it. I think it's really disgusting that the mayor tried to like use the residents right. of like, oh, how dare you release this? They wanted what? it. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. A resident shot back because yeah. he said, oh, these uh, journalists are chicken yeah. and unprofessional for releasing the footage. And they said a resident shot back asking him if he thought the cops were chickens. How about that? Um, so the residents, I'm sure, feel that this has been a service that has done that th gives the public and gives them some at least answers about what actually happened. So to hide behind this, I mean, it's just total bullshit. It really has been a cover up at all levels. They and, and by the way, there is still a lot of information that has not come out because they are blocking the release of the body cam footage, any and all documents relevant to that day. At every level, from the county to the state, they are standing in the way of that information um, ultimately being released to the public. And at this point, I mean, the, the very least, given the colossal, what should be criminal failures that happened here, the very least they can do is provide these families with the truth of what unfolded on that day. Yeah. And people who are uh, relatives of the victims reacted and they were, they're disgusted, they're horrified. And like, you know, this is the main thing. It's it's not just the Evaldi police. There were, there were feds there, Border Patrol. Texas Rangers, and, you know, US Marshals. US Marshals. 
all of them should be dragged before. I mean, look, can't somebody in Congress step up too? You have subpoena power. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, drag their asses before Congress. Make them, you know, make them testify and or let them plead the fifth if they want to. But let people see it because the video, I think, should just be the starting point. I mean, I'm not naive, and I think most of these guys will keep their jobs, which is honestly the most disgusting part of this entire thing. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing, and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.